the Korean National Assembly approved $6.1 billion for the defense budget in fiscal year 2022, a 3.1% increase from last year. The Democratic Party, which holds a majority of seats in the National Assembly, unanimously passed the new budget, including funding requested by the Republic of Korea Navy for the CVX aircraft carrier project. Two shipbuilders and designs are competing, Hyundai Heavy Industries and DSME. CVX is a contentious issue in South Korea. The Republic of Korea Navy had launched a fierce public relations campaign to convince the public and the National Assembly of the utility of the program. For now, this campaign seems to have been successful. The ROKN plans to proceed with the project as scheduled, beginning the preliminary design phase next year with the ultimate goal of making the carrier operational by 2033. French shipbuilder Naval Group has launched the first Go-Wind Corvette for the United Arab Emirates Navy. The United Arab Emirates ordered in 2019 two Go-Wind Corvettes to be built in France by Naval Group at its Lorient shipyard. The first Corvette is named Banias. The second vessel is set to be launched in 2022. The Go-Win 2500 Corvette is 102 meters long with a maximum width of 16 meters and a draft of 5.4 meters. The displacement at full load is around 2800 tons. Spanish shipbuilder Navantia has launched the fifth Corvette being built for the Royal Saudi Naval Forces named Aneza as a tribute to its city located north of the capital of Saudi Arabia. The Corvette Aneza is the fifth and final ship being built by Navantia in the Avanti 2200 program. It has a length of 104 meters and a beam of 14 and will be able to transport a total of 102 people, including crew and passengers. It is set to be delivered in 2024. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has awarded Phase 2 contracts for the Manta Ray Unmanned Underwater Vehicle Program to Northrop Grumman and Martin Defense Group. They will build and test full-scale integrated vehicles. The Manta Ray Program seeks to develop UUVs that operate for extended durations without the need for on-site human logistics support or maintenance. The effort seeks to demonstrate innovative technologies allowing payload-capable autonomous unmanned underwater vehicles to operate on long-range missions in ocean environments. The U.S. Navy and Boeing have successfully maneuvered the MQ-25 on a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier for the first time. An early step forward in ensuring the unmanned aerial refueler will seamlessly integrate into carrier operations. The demonstration aboard USS George H.W. Bush was intended to evaluate the functionality, capability, and handling qualities of the deck handling system in both day and night conditions. Maneuvers included taxiing on the deck, connecting to the catapult, clearing the landing area, and parking on the deck. 